Hi, I'm Winter, and oh boy, there's a new Nintendo Direct! You know what that means, the Nintendo fans are either extremely happy or extremely annoying. Let's see what was announced. But today, I also wanted to reveal our key cast members, who will be voicing Mario and his friends in the movie. Okay, cool. First, of course, is Mario, who will be played by Chris Pratt. Another three months of the year has gone by, and that means another Nintendo Direct. September is a month where there's almost always a Nintendo Direct, and this one was no exception, with Nintendo announcing it the day before. This Direct was obviously sort of a big deal with it being 40 minutes long, so I've decided to talk about it because... this was weird. I'm not gonna be rating every announcement or anything, because honestly I just didn't care for a lot of what was shown, but, I mean, if I can't talk about every Nintendo Direct as they happen, then... What's even the point of living? This direct started with a reveal trailer for the new expansion DLC for Monster Hunter Rise, titled Sunbreak, and... Okay, look, I've tried Monster Hunter, and it's just not something I'm interested in. I know there are a lot of fans of the series out there, especially with more recent entries growing in popularity over here in the States, but for me, this just isn't very interesting. I did think it was kind of funny that they specified it was a massive expansion, though. After that, the man of the hour introduces himself. Yoshiaki Koizumi is the host of this direct. He goes on for too long about Monster Hunter Rise while the exact same trailer from before plays, then snaps us right into the headlines. I always love looking at the facial expressions whenever anyone snaps in these directs because they just look so proud of themselves. First headline is from Mario Party Superstars, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm so excited for this game. I've never been a huge Mario Party fan, I mean, I'm not going to be getting this one day one or anything, but this looks like it's just going to be Mario Party the Top 100 if it was, you know, good. A lot of the minigames in this one look like great picks as well, I just wish there were boards from games from the GameCube and Wii. The N64 had some great boards, don't get me wrong, but I want Toad's Midway Madness for Mario Party 4. That's the board I have by far the most nostalgia for. After Mario Party, they showed this new card-based RPG called Voice of Cards, The Isle Dragon Roars, and... Okay, yeah, I don't like RPGs all that much. You wouldn't know it considering some of my favorite games are Pokemon, Xenoblade, Skyrim, that type of thing, but to be honest, while I do like a lot of RPGs, those are more exceptions to the rule than anything. I think the concept of this game being completely made of cards is really neat, and with Yoko Taro behind it, I'm sure it'll be perfectly fine, it just seems pretty boring to me. Then they showed that Disco Elysium The Final Cut is coming to Switch. Now, this game's name makes it sound funky as hell, but up until this direct, I had no idea what it was. Now that I've seen it, I... I don't mean to repeat myself, but... Look, detective games are great. I love Ace Attorney, and Ace Attorney, and... Yeah, mystery games are the same as RPGs for me. I love Ace Attorney, but I will not be caught dead enjoying Professor Layton. I just prefer more action-oriented games, I guess. Like, with these mystery games, you're usually playing as a detective, trying to solve a murder or something after the fact. I understand why people enjoy that type of thing. It just isn't for me. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity's expansion pass. I wish I cared. I bought this game a few days after release, played it for like two hours, and decided it wasn't for me. I love Breath of the Wild, it's by far the best game in the Zelda series, and while Age of Calamity has the same great characters and music and art style and colors and everything, I just really don't like the Warriors gameplay. In theory, it's really satisfying, but in execution, it just always feels off to me. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad this game did well and that they're still continuing to support it. I also think letting you play as Pura and Robbie is hilarious. It's just not for me personally. Chocobo GP! Again, I don't care about RPGs, and I have no personal attachment to Final Fantasy at all, or most of Square's franchises other than Chrono Trigger. As a result, even though this is a racing game that looks genuinely fun, I just don't care. It's like, would you care about Mario Kart if you didn't know who Mario was? Because I wouldn't. There's a reason only 6 billion people have played Garfield Kart, because the other 1 billion people who haven't have no idea who Garfield is. Yoshiaki's back and he's asking what I think. Well, so far... We have some news about the last fighter for the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate game. So yeah, the final fighter in Smash Bros. Ultimate is going to be revealed on October 5th. I'm kinda happy that the game is about to finally be completed after so long, it's been a long time coming. I honestly don't care too much about who the last fighter will be. My number one dream character was Pyra and Mithra, so unless it's Phoenix Wright, I really don't care, I'm just going to be happy for everyone who is happy about it. After a snap, we're shown this abandoned shopping mall and a bridge. 
This looks like a stylized post-apocalyptic title so far until it pans to a beach with Kirby face down in the sand and oh my god, this is such a long time coming, the first ever 3D Kirby game. There were multiple attempts at making one for the GameCube before they went back and decided Kirby was 2D only, and to see a fully functioning 3D Kirby game just feels surreal at this point. Kirby has deserved to move into the third dimension since the Nintendo 64, and I'm just so glad to see it finally happen. This is by far the best reveal so far, and makes Spring 2022 easy to look forward to. Mr. Koizumi talks about Kirby for a while longer, and then we move on to some updates regarding Animal Crossing. The Roost is being added to New Horizons, and more that will be expanded upon in an October Animal Crossing Direct. This is something a lot of people have wanted in New Horizons since it first launched, and it's good it's finally coming. I'm not a fan of this game personally, but I'm glad the people who do are finally getting new content. After a third snap, we get updates on Mario Golf Super Rush, and then a port of Disney Magical World 2. I thought this was a stupid thing to put in a direct, but apparently people really f***ing love this game for some reason. I will 100% not be picking this up, but I'm so happy for the for some reason existent Disney Magical World 2 community. After that, the original Knights of the Old Republic is coming to Switch. Cool, I guess, but I've never liked this game. It's just kind of boring to me, definitely not my style in terms of Star Wars games. Dying Light 2 Stay Human is coming to Switch! Whoa! It's a cloud version! I hate these cloud versions. What a stupid idea, genuinely. You're spending $60 on a product you probably won't even be able to play in 10 years. It's just stupid, and I feel like nobody in the Switch's install base is really begging for these games, especially when they'll probably be available on the Steam Deck when it launches. Triangle Strategy! Okay. The game looks great, just like Octopath Traveler, but I don't like RPGs and I'm gonna stop saying that and just stop talking about RPGs if they don't interest me. Alright, now we get a few minutes dedicated to Metroid Dread. This game looks really good and I'm not going to buy it. I really don't like Metroid. Not because I think it's bad, far from it, it's just that I'm not a fan of games with the sort of atmosphere Metroid has and from the looks of it, Dread is going to follow Fusion's path and is going to be way creepier than necessary. Not something I'm interested in, but it's still super cool that it's being made at all. Hey, it's my man Koizumi, and he's giving an update on Nintendo Switch Online. So there's going to be a new membership option that'll give you access to Nintendo 64 and Sega Genesis games, and this is super cool. That's all I have to say. I don't play a lot of multiplayer games, so I'm not going to bitch about the online play being bad, even though, yeah, it is, but this is the first time these games are going to have official online multiplayer, and that's pretty cool. The Genesis is a pretty weird choice though, and why is Sonic 2 going to be available but not Sonic 1? That's just bizarre. Banjo-Kazooie is officially coming back to a Nintendo console through the service as well, and like, that's really cool. I'm glad Nintendo and Microsoft have such a strong relationship now because this means things like this are possible. Banjo-Kazooie just kind of fell off after Microsoft bought Rare, and they've been seeing a weird half-resurgence since all these Nintendo partnerships. Then they show some game collections I don't care about, and ActRaiser, which looks kind of bad. I mean, I don't care about it, but I really don't like how this game looks, and I couldn't tell you why. It just kind of has that mobile game look to it, you know? Deltarune Chapter 2 is coming to Switch, and yeah, this is how I played Chapter 2, and I really just don't care. This isn't a surprise at all, although it was definitely sooner than I expected. I have a lot of thoughts about this game, but this really isn't the place for them. Love the trailer, though. Time for a sizzle reel. These never really have any games I care about in them, although Shin Megami Tensei looks beautiful as always. Hey, it's Yoshiaki and Miyamoto this time. Miyamoto talks about the Mario movie, basically saying that production is progressing and it will be released in holiday 2022. Okay, I guess. I've never really cared about this, but it's good to know when it's releasing at least. But today, I also wanted to reveal our key cast members who will be voicing Mario and his friends in the movie. Okay, go for it! First, of course, is Mario, who will be played by Chris Pratt. This looks like a memorial. So the casting for this movie is horrible, and I love it. Chris Pratt as Mario, Charlie Day as Luigi, Jack Black as Bowser, Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong, but I keep remembering it wrong and thinking it's Joe Rogen as Donkey Kong, which would be way funnier. Look, no matter what, Jack Black is the only good pick here, and I think that's so funny. Charles Martinet is in the movie, but he's not voicing Mario and Luigi, characters who he has voiced for over 25 years now. That's just insulting, and I understand why so many people are so pissed about it. It's just so funny. Does Chris Pratt deserve this role? 
Oh god no he doesn't. He's a great actor, but he's not a great Mario. I want to see the audition tapes. But man, <laughs> Nintendo is just making a multi-million dollar sh post at this point, and I can't wait to see it crash and burn. Anyway, we're brought back to the game announcements with Splatoon 3, and it certainly looks like Splatoon. I love the Splatoon series style, but come back to me once I've actually played the first two games. Until then, they all look exactly the same to me. The last announcement is a trailer for Astral Chain 2, I mean Bayonetta 3, okay, this is pretty cool. Bayonetta 3 has been in development hell for years now, and it's awesome to see it in a playable state. And I mean a playable state, because most of this trailer is just gameplay. I don't like the Bayonetta games, but it's just really cool to see this finally, you know, existing. Koizumi talks about Bayonetta for a little bit, bids us farewell, and that's it. Overall, this direct was a roller coaster. I mean, we got some really cool announcements like Kirby and the Forgotten Land or Nintendo 64 coming to Switch Online, but also some weird stuff like they just kind of dropped on us that Chris Pratt is Mario now. And that just feels wrong. I just can't bring myself to say this was a good direct. A good direct is something that's hard to really define. For me, the last good direct was the one where Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition was first revealed, but that's just because I love Xenoblade. A good direct is truly a subjective thing and it's hard to define, but come on. Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong and you think this is good? I'm just mad there was no Xenoblade reveal.